In The War The Fallout, vault Tech's program of underground fallout shelters, or vaults, was less about the preservation of human society in the case of nuclear annihilation, and more about letting vault Tech scientists mess with people in a consequence-free environment. I had no idea of the dangerous vault Tech had hidden away so close to home. Yeah, it's kind of their whole deal, and the vaults of Fallout 4 are no exception. By way of example, here are the six dickest moves by vault Tech in Fallout 4. There are no spoilers for the main story ahead, but turn off now if you don't want vault-related side quests spoiled. We need to get to the vault. Now! I've got Sean. Let's go. Residents of Sanctuary Hills, if you are registered, evacuate to Vault 111 immediately. If you're watching this, the chances are you know all about Vault 111. It's the vault your character is chucked into at the start of Fallout 4, and its aim was to study the effects of prolonged cryostasis on its residents. Which, actually, seems like a pretty straightforward setup that, in the event of a nuclear apocalypse, you probably wouldn't have trouble finding people to volunteer for. The world's going to be irradiated for centuries, so it makes sense to freeze yourself until the planet is safe again. Even if the long-term effects could be dangerous, it's still less dangerous than taking a nuke to the face. But that's not really vault techs style, so instead what they did was trick everyone, telling them it was a normal vault, claiming that the cryostasis pods were for decontamination, and then freezing them when they least expected it. Procedure complete. Maybe they just wanted the residents to all have hilarious, surprised faces to give the caretakers something to look at when they cleaned the observation panels. Vault 114 underneath Park Street Station was created to house Boston's social elite in the case of nuclear war. Its residents were promised state-of-the-art luxury accommodation where they would mingle only with the cream of Massachusetts society. But as you can see, the accommodation is the opposite of luxurious. In fact, Vault 114 was designed to be as cramped and uncomfortable as possible, with whole families crammed into single rooms, shared bathrooms and minimal comforts to test how the previously well-off and comfortable residents would cope with what vault Tech describes as stressful situations. The final vault Tech flourish was the appointment of the eccentric overseer, who was a man named Soup Can Harry, and had some curious views on the government. Mr. Um, Soup Can, would you mind telling me why you're distrustful of the government? I've seen what they do. Gum up the works with red tape and bureaucracy, take every hard-earned cent and use it to fund their Illuminati, Freemason sex parties. Yes, put him in charge. Also, vault Tech staff were specifically told not to undermine his authority just because it would be extra funny, I guess. I ain't wearing no goddamn tie. Or pants. Sadly, we don't know how the reign of Soup Can Harry would have panned out because Vault 114 was unfinished and we don't know if any residents actually made it inside or not. Still, he seemed to have a knack for survival, so he probably did okay. I seen the back of them Abraxo boxes. Not for consumption? Don't you tell me what to do. I'll eat what I want. At first glance, the goals of Vault 95 seemed to be quite noble. The idea was to help rehabilitate drug addicts. Locked in the vault, away from chems, and participating in group therapy in a controlled environment, vault residents stand the best chance of kicking their habit for good. And even if they can't do it on their own, the vault comes equipped with a detox chamber that'll do it for them. <laughs> Maybe just put them all in there to begin with. So yeah, is this finally a bit of philanthropy from vault Tech? Are they helping some sick people with their problems? <laughs> this is vault Tech, so obviously not. One of the residents of the vault was actually a vault Tech sleeper agent who, after five years had passed, would open up a secret storeroom fully stocked with chems for the other residents to discover. He was then to document his findings, although the fact that there's only one entry in his diary and the fact that everyone is dead in a big pile of drugs kind of shows you how that one turned out. Gwen McNamara, Overseer. Welcome to Vault 81. We've never encountered a fellow vault dweller. Vault 81 was designed to allow scientists the opportunity to develop a universal cure for all diseases. Naturally, vault Tech wanted to do this in as dickish a way as possible, so they built two Vault 81s, one for scientists, one for regular people that the scientists could infect with diseases and watch 24-7 through two-way mirrors. Oh, real nice, Holt. Make this about you. Don't you think about anyone other than yourself? Luckily for the residents of Vault 81, their overseer wasn't what you'd call vault Tech material, in that she had a conscience. When the vault was due to be sealed, she sabotaged the phone list so that hardly any of the scientists made it to the vault before it closed, and the three who did make it in were cut off from the residents and trapped for good on the science side of the divide. So, Vault 81 turned out pretty well in the end, no thanks to vault Tech. 
Unless you're one of the scientists, I guess, although they even created a cool French doctor robot over there, and she finally succeeded in creating the universal cure thereafter. So mission accomplished. Hooray for vault right, makeshift scientist graves? I don't care what kind of fancy facilities your school had, your heated squash court definitely doesn't trump having a multi-story fallout shelter in the basement like Molden Middle School in the Commonwealth. Vault 75 is in the basement of a school because it needed to be handy for the kids, because Vault 75 believes that children are the future, so much so that their parents were taken to one side and shot on day one. The kids were then tested, mentally and physically, until they reached 18 where the strongest and smartest were harvested for their genes, the clever but weak were recruited as Vault 75 staff, and the rest were just killed. Then that first batch of strong smart genes went into creating the next batch of Vault 75 kids. Amazingly, no one at vault Tech noticed the inherent problem in making all your staff weaklings and training the kids from birth to be able to overpower them. They even gave them a combat training environment and weapons. Although I've seen their results, they're not so hot. In your face, super kids! Anyway, it should come as no surprise that there was an uprising and the Vault 75 kids overthrew the staff and made their escape. If only we knew who had organized it all. Wait, it couldn't be. <laughs> Gary! Good morning! vault Tech calling! Finally, and this isn't a vault, but vault Tech are super dicks to this guy, their vault Tech representative in Sanctuary Hills. You'd think, after all his tireless work doorstepping families to try and get them to sign up for a spot in Vault 111, he'd get a place himself. It's not even one of the overtly murdery vaults, that's gotta count as a company perk. But no, he's not on the list, so vault Tech are happy to let their rep perish in the flames of nuclear annihilation. That's absurd! I am not on the list! Tech. You don't get in! I'm going in! You can't stop me! Oh, 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 okay, okay! Um, I'm hey recording there. this! Except that he doesn't. Yes, the vault Tech rep is still hanging around 200 years later, having become a ghoul. A very angry ghoul who's justifiably pissed off with vault Tech, you and everyone of the whole world in that order. I am vault Tech. Then you got everything you deserve, buddy. Oh, oh, that's rich. Real funny. Those were the six dickest moves by vault Tech in Fallout 4. What kind of vaults would you make if vault Tech put you in charge? Let us know in the comments and like and subscribe for more videos like this from outside Xbox. Thanks for watching!